I'm recording you. Say hi. So right now, let's go into writing. So we're going to go over some of the concepts that you spoke about with your teacher in your writing class, your online writing class. And we're going to do a review on those things. And we're also going to do a review on some of the topics that we talked about this year thus far. And we're going to do one or two lessons in the subject of writing and then you're going to take about 30 minutes and complete your homework for your writing class so i want you to look at all the words on this board and look at this little drawing here and i'm going to give you about five minutes five ten minutes to think about everything and then we're and then you're going to define everything for me yes yes very yes so i want you to good so i want you to fill it in you're going to fill in what this is fill in what this line is what this line is what the star is and what and what this is okay so fill that in so go ahead tell me read each word i want to make sure you can read my handwriting conflict very good conflict theme plot rising action moral Proverb, mm -hmm. amplification, mm -hmm. summary, mm -hmm. anthropomorphism, anthropomorphism mm -hmm. com, com, copiousness. copiousness. Stories should have three sections at a minimum. Oh, yeah. You know those three parts? Yeah. That, don't tell me. <laughs> Keep going. At, um, characters, characters, setting, climax. climax. Very good. So I'm going to give you five minutes to think about those definitions. Mm -hmm. um, fill in this little... Um, figure here for me, mm -hmm. and then we're going to define each one. You're going to talk about each one for me, and then tell me the importance of adding these things to your story. Does your stories have to have all of these things in them? No. No, but the majority of them, do you think they'll have them? Yeah. Yeah, right? So go ahead and do that. Five, do you want five minutes or ten minutes? Ten. Okay, go ahead. Alexa, put on the timer for 10 minutes. For how long? 10 minutes. <laughs> 10 minutes, starting now. Another word I want you to add on here, write it anywhere you want, is voice. I forgot to add that. Oh, yeah, I love voices. Oh. So get the marker and write the word voice anywhere you want. Okay, so go ahead. Tell me about anything you want, or would you like me to go in? Well, you want me to talk, and then we you we have a conversation, or you want to go down this list and define? You talk and you have a conversation. I talk. Okay, so let's talk about voice. The voice is the heart of a writer. So go ahead and tell me, what do you know about voice in terms of writing? What does that mean, voice? Does it mean singing? No. 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 It doesn't. Please stop. Out of my ears. Okay. <laughs> so go ahead. Tell me. Oh, wait, what am I doing? Said, I don't know what you're doing. Can we tell who you're like? Mm-hmm. Okay, so I think your voice is your way of writing something. Like, because okay. you might have the same idea as someone, mm -hmm. but you idea, I say that. Okay. Idea of some, uh, uh, the same idea as someone, mm -hmm. but you guys might go write a story completely different because you have different writing voices. Okay. Okay. But what does voice mean? You use the word in the definition. You know I don't like that. You said you might have the same voice as someone. You might have the same idea as someone. Idea? So you think voice means idea? No. No, I don't. That's not what I said. Because you said you saw I, I have the same voice as someone. I, I didn't say slow that. Slow down. Slow your speech down. Okay. So I, go ahead. Yeah, you just misinterpreted. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, but I said that um, 
that you and another person might have the same idea on the story, mm -hmm. but your story will c come out completely different because you two have completely different writing voices. They'll use the word... Okay, so your voice is your main weapon in writing. Anyone can put words on paper, right? But your voice is seeping into your characters, your writing, your slang, the dictation, how you say things, dialect, yet they are all in your voice. If you are writing a character, you may do some kind of research on how a person from a different country can talk. Um, but like it or not, your voice seeps in, okay? So as I'm talking, think about what the word voice means in terms of writing. And when you have an aha moment, define it for me. Voice is key to setting the tone. Voice helps you create setting. For instance, if you're going to use slang for a character, only you can pick the words you place in the character's mind and voice. Um, I think I know. Mm -hmm. I think voice is your own specific way of writing something. I like that. Very good. So your your story is different than your voice. Your story is, at its core, who you are because of your experiences. Mm -hmm. Let's say you read a book about a robbery. If you have been um, part of one or um, seen a robbery, hopefully that's never happened, you never been a part of one, you never seen one, right? You're gonna hope that never happens. Your experience is different than someone who's never experienced a robbery. So when you're writing a story, you're putting your heart, your voice, you're shaping the setting, the theme, because of your experience of being in a robbery. So how you can tell that story may be a little different than someone who's just read books about it, or someone who doesn't even know what a robbery means and you give them a definition and then they're forced to tell you a story about it, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, very good. So I love your definition of what you said in terms of um, your voice, okay? So as a writer, when we write, we all strive to write for ourselves first. We pour our voice, our story, experience, and heart into what you're writing because that's what's going to capture the reader. That's what's going to capture the audience. That's what's going to allow you to make your story vivid. Do you understand what I mean when I say vivid? That's what's going to help people visualize or see your story. Have you ever read a book where you feel like you are in the scene, like you can see what's actually happening? Because that writer is putting their, pouring their heart into that, probably their experience or their voice. They're making it very vivid so that you can visualize what's happening because of the words that they use, right? Like in um, Imagine. In the book Imagine? Oh, the book series Imagine that you're reading? Yes. yes. You can see yourself in that situation because how they are setting the tone of the story, right? Okay. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So when you're writing, when anyone's writing, even when I write and I have to, you know, do work, we get stuck. We don't know what to say, right? Yeah. So what happens when you get stuck? Is it hard for you to find your voice when you're stuck? Yes. Right? Sometimes that happens, right? Because when I write a lot, but I have no idea what goes next, mm -hmm. or I just write, but I have no idea of what I want to write, mm -hmm. I can't really figure out anything, and I can't really do, and I usually end up copying stuff because I can't find my own way of doing it. And that's because you may not have an experience, right? You don't have a voice for that particular subject. That's why it's important for you to write about what you know in some instances from your own experiences because you'll be able to make it vivid, right? I just saw something. How do you spell beginning? <laughs> um, I don't know. It's a race. Let me just um, rewrite how I wrote it. Big. I, I know how to spell beginning, okay? Um, is that an attitude? No. I bet you still spelled it wrong, which you did. Beginning. No, it's beginning. How I spelled it. Beginning. Begin. Begin. Ning. 
Beginning. Yeah. Begin to end. Very good. I need your help. <laughs> okay. So that's voice. Let's check off the word voice. Okay. So talk to me. Talk to me about, you know, plot, rising, falling action, theme, conflict, setting, climax, characters. Talk to me about those things. What is the plot? Stop throwing the marker and talk to me about So again, what's plot? The plot, plot of a story. The events that happen inside the story. Very good. So plot are the events that are happening in the story that's getting you to the conclusion. Not the, the conclusion, climax. the climax, okay? So when we have a plot from here to here. Mm -hmm, very good. That's gonna be your plot, the dun 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 of the story, right? So we have the beginning of the story. And we have the events that are that are getting us to our climax. So when we're getting to our climax, what type of action is taking place? When we're getting from the beginning to our action, to our climax, what all the events that take place between the beginning and the climax are what? Okay, it's the plot, the events that are taking place, but what kind of action is happening? Rising. Right, what are what is rising actions? A rising action. Conflict. Okay. Okay. I like that. So conflict can be a part of your rising action, right? Mm -hmm. So the rising action is a part of the plots, the events that are getting you to your conflict. Can conf I'm sorry, climax. Can conflict be good or bad? Or is conflict, it could be good or bad? It could be good or bad. Very good. So then we get to the climax, and we said that stories have, at a minimum, three parts, right? What are those three parts? The beginning, the end, the end, the middle. Then the middle. So where does the climax normally happen in the story? The middle. The middle. I have a perfect example of that. Okay, I'm listening. Darth Vader and Luke fighting, fighting, and in the climax. Say it again. So in Star Wars, um, you have Darth Vader and Luke. Mm -hmm. They fight and fight, and the climax is where he says, Luke, I am your father. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Back to our regularly scheduled program. <laughs> so the climax, you know that the climax is often referred to as like the turning point, right, of the story. That's the highest point that's where that's why we have a peak there the highest point of your story is normally the climax so when a plot is eventful think of one event that changes everything moving forward that's that middle thing that point where everything changes okay so when we get to that point what happens next in your story normally what starts to happen after we get to that peak, then where does the story go from there normally? Oh, does it keep going, rising? No, it starts going down. What is that called? The conclusion, the following action. Which gets to the conclusion, the ending, the resolution. Okay? Mm -hmm. So the falling action takes us from that peak, that middle, that climax, the highest point of the story. And then it starts going down right does that mean your story has to be boring or get boring when it's going down no. could you have multiple climaxes throughout your story yeah, yeah you could have multiple climaxes throughout your story very good like you said it gets you to the ending of the story the resolution of the story at the end of your story does there always have to be a resolution does something have to be solved does that conflict have to be solved no. at the end of your story it's called a cliffhanger Absolutely. It doesn't have to be solved. And you can have something called a cliffhanger. And what's a cliffhanger again? It's um, when the story hangs um, st um, hangs off on like a part where you want to know more. Very so, good. And that's, how, and that's how authors get you to authors? buy. Authors, video game artists, um, get you to buy their second issue. Oh, um, very good. Issues. That That's absolutely true. So um, let me ask you another question. Does, do you want 
does every story have to have some type of conflict, good or bad? Yeah. Yeah, I would say so. So you want your story to have some kind of challenge, a problem around where the plot is based. Without the conflict, your story, will it have a purpose? No, because... Okay, so let's add some more. And I know I'm going to... I forgot some of the stuff you said. You probably did too. But let's think about um, what we, we talked about in the past how we can add details to our stories, right? How we can amplification, how we can amplify our stories. What does amplify mean? Remember that? Amplification? Mm. When make, we um, make um give them more detail. Give it more detail. So when we're amplifying something, we are expanding, giving it more detail, making it a bit longer. And if we want to do a summary of it, what are we doing? We make it shorter. We were making the story shorter. But when we make the story shorter... We, we still need to keep the moral and the theme. Very good. And still maintain setting. moral and theme. And what else? Setting. Setting. Excellent. So go ahead and check off amplification and, and, and summary off of that. Let's keep talking. And, um, and, um, and, um, oh yeah, and more kind of setting already. Yep. Okay. So back to the story that you were talking about. You did amplify it by adding some additional details. And you added details by setting, providing a setting, providing descriptions, right? Mm -hmm. Excellent. So you said something about he was in the forest and he heard the howling of the wolves, right? What else would make the story, not in terms of setting, because you gave us a setting, right? But what? how can we amplify the story even further to to do this to do this there was something you learned a few weeks ago for your poem i forget what it's called okay but you'll probably get it once i try to remember um summarize what it was you were writing a poem and you had to make the poem come alive by like um Giving human like features. Oh, yeah, to the bird. To the blue bird. animals, right? Yeah, because I was writing a poem for my own. And so I, you had to write a poem. Mm -hmm. And so I did it about a blue bird, mm -hmm. but the, the poem wasn't good and it didn't have enough detail. So what I did is I did a. <laughs> you forgot the word? Proper. Personification. Personification. Mm -hmm. um, and gave the bluebird human like characteristics. Okay. So think about the story right now that we're amplifying about the little golden skinned boy walking through the forest, the dark forest, and hearing the howls of the wolves. Now, give me some human like characteristics for the wolves. The wolf. Um, the, the little boy could hear the howling of the wolves. And as the wolf got closer and closer. No, 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 no. And as the wolf started, and he saw a wolf. As the wolf started what? No, as, no, as he, heard, he heard the howl of the wolves as he saw him jump out the bush. Starting to slowly crawl towards him. Okay, you're crawling? Yeah. And as the wolf crawled closer and closer and closer his, to him he licked his tongue as he he can lick his tongue you can't lick your I mean, tongue I mean, he licked his lips the wolf said, licked his lips as he said as he howled what a delicious treat this is so he howled what a delicious treat this is could he howl no and he said what and a he delicious said treat this is but wolves can't actually talk so it's a very, very good so after howling multiple times, he licked his lips and said, what a wonderful treat this is. And as he got closer and closer to the boy, the boy turned around, curled up, hoping that the wolf would go away. And he felt the wolf's breath on the back of his neck as his hair, ah, <laughs> it's getting good, isn't it? <laughs> so you put human like, features personification mm -hmm. on the animal which was the wolf because wolves can't talk right now there's a word on here anthropomorphism, anthropomorphism. what is anthropomorphism uh, 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 so 
Anthropos is a Greek word, which means man, and morph means to change. You remember that conversation we had? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you put them together, it's a human changing form. So whenever a storybook animal or like a fable or something, whenever an animal acts like a human being, that's anthropomorphism. But we just said polymorphism. No, not polymorphism. What is poly? What is polymorphism? What are we talking about here? Polymorph personification. personification. So personification is giving animals human-like features. Now this, features. Now this while is anthropomorphism is, is what I'm giving, making animals act like humans. Right. So, so wait, wait, the wait, example wait. we just gave. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. About the wolf saying something. Are we giving the wolf features? No. Or are we giving them human-like actions? Like doing human things that humans would do. Human-like actions. Almost like in the secret life of pets. Yes. So, in that example of the wolf licking his lips and then saying something, is that personification or anthropomorphism? Anthropomorphism. Wonderful job. He's licking his lips. Very good. No, not that he's licking his lips. He is saying something. The words. Animals don't talk. So we're giving them human like feet. I'm sorry. We're giving them human like characteristics. Yep. Right? Talking. Things that humans do. So go ahead and check off anthropomorphism for me, please. Like um, the hair from Alice Character. in the Wonderland who wears a pocket watch. And goes to a crazy tea party, right? Mm -hmm. um, the Wizard of Oz wears caps and vests, okay? Mm -hmm. And um, I think I'm wrong with this because honestly, a human-like feature, feature that that our example, I think. Let me talking should be anthropomorphism. No, talking really isn't anthrop. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah, correct talking myself. Should be, talking should be um. Personification. Yes, profana exactly. That's a, that's I, a human feature. Exactly. I agree with you. I agree with you. So in but, our example of then, the wolf talking, that is actually personification because it's a feature. Mm -hmm. Right? I, I agree with you. Anthropomorphism, how could we have made that wolf um have human like characteristics? Um a human being an animal being like a human. By, Opening a door and starting to and get in the car to go to work. Exactly, I agree. So let's do it like this. Oh, like you told so me. the wolf, so the wolf licked his licked his lips and said, "What a great treat this is." Oh, better yet, let's do this. So the wolf stood up all of a sudden. Um, hmm. So the wolf stood up all of a sudden, took out his pocket watch from his vest and said, look what time it is. It's time to eat. What a lovely treat you will be. So in that case, by him talking, I know, by him talking, that's personification, by him standing up, human life, by him Taking out a pocket watch, human-like, and from his vest, human-like, those are anthropomorphisms. I hope that makes sense. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So let's check that off already. Wonderful. So we talked about um, a theme, and you said a theme is like making sure your story has some kind of moral, right? So what's a moral? A moral is what the um, story is trying to teach. Something is trying to teach you, right? Something from right... Or wrong insight, mm -hmm. or a lesson of some sort, right? Very good. Yeah, check that off. Laws. Never trust witches. <laughs> so check off moral. Talk to me about characters. Do we need characters in our story? Um, no. No. No, we actually don't. We don't. Uh, uh you don't need characters. You can say the cloud. Oh yeah, the cloud would be a character. That's what you talk about. And yes. You didn't need characters. So, if you got a character, you would be saying, on the rainy day, in the dark forest, in the 
um, close to the ocean blue. So what are characters? Because you're missing the characters that can be in those spots. And without mm -hmm. the characters, you can't get a conflict. You can't have a conflict? Because, because yes, you can't have a conflict. Because you could, sure, you can have setting, mm -hmm. but but the things that you can turn setting into a character. Because you could say, uh, the ocean as the ocean blue fought against the rising sky. Mm -hmm. Um. Those are two. Oh, I like that. As the ocean blue fought against the rising sky. All right. And then All right. those are thought to be characters mm -hmm. because those because now you're just describing those and mm -hmm. those are characters. So they might not be main characters, but mm -hmm. not but you're making them into characters. Characters mm -hmm. don't have to be humans, they don't have to be animals. It's so it's basically who you're writing about, what you're writing about are your characters, right? Very good. I like that. Check that off. Now You're, you remember it a lot. Yeah. Good job. So, talk to me about a proverb. Do you remember what a proverb is? So, we talked about moral, a lesson. Something that teaches from right or wrong, right? Mm -hmm. That's supposed to teach you right from wrong. What are proverbs? you remember what that is? Ah, ah, oh, I know this. I know this. So, I'm going to go ahead and give it to you. Okay. Proverb. well, morals could be proverbs. Proverbs are like wise sayings, things to help us be wiser for the rest of our lives so we can live by them. Like weaklings will always stay weak. No, oh, you shouldn't say that. No, that is <laughs> weaklings will always stay weak. No, that, that's <laughs> no, it's okay. like wise sayings like beware of this, listen to this. Oh, yeah. Yes. That's why they say morals could be proverbs. So proverbs are supposed to provide some type of wisdom, right? And that's why, again, morals can be proverbs. So let's go ahead and cross or check off proverb. Excellent. How about copiousness? copiousness. Do you remember what that is? Copiousness. I learned that in writing class. You learned that from me. And I also learned that. Oh, your writing class, she used that word copiousness? Yes. Or to be copious? Okay. Do you remember what that is? Nope. Think about it. If I, tell, if I say, I always tell you, Jeremiah, when you're writing your notes, when I assign you a few pages mm -hmm. to read, I want you to write copious notes. Detailed? I like it. Very good. Detailed. Mm -hmm. So copious means plentiful, abundant, detailed okay mm -hmm. excellent job so when you are writing i want you to remember all of these things that go ahead and check off copious or copiousness i want you to remember all the things that we just talked about okay mm -hmm. there's another word that i want you to learn today okay write this word down and then you're going to write it oh wait check off copiousness yes, go ahead. Mm -hmm. So, and then try to pronounce this word. E L. I like it. I don't. I don't know. E L O. C U. T I O N. Let me spell it again. E L O C U T I O N. Election. E, what do you see as election? Elocution. Elocution. Oh, you, oh, you're close. Yes. Uh, elocution. Ah, uh, but she, she on. What was she on? T I O N makes what sound? Elution. <laughs> the C. Don't forget the C. Elocution. Elocution. Keep going. Keep, keep going. Elocution. Close, but the but the C. Where are you getting the sh from C? Elocution. Oh, hello, Kushian. Oh, why, why, why are you saying shun? I mean, hello, Kushian. Kushian. Hello, Kushian. That, that, that does not say Ushian. Hello, Kushian. Hello, Kushian. Very good. Hello, Kushian. Hello, Kushian. Excellent. So, this is something, this is a new word I want you to remember and think about. So, say, elocution. 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 Very good. Whether you are you know, reciting a poem or reading a story aloud like we always do. You want to speak in such a... Yeah, yeah, turn, yeah, turn on the lights, yeah. You want to speak in such a way that the audience can hear you loud and clear. I know, the lights suck over here. 
Oh, I know. We, we need to get um, better lighting. They're all dim. Like upstairs and stuff, that would make sense. But in this room right here. No, we definitely want it up here. Yeah. So we want to make sure your audience can hear you loud and clear. So the art of speaking skillfully is known as elocution. So you know how we're always doing presentation skills. I'm always making you, you know, answer questions in essay style. I'm always having you provide a verbal response to things. So the art of being able to speak skillfully and confidently and loud and clear and articulating your words, all that is elocution. Say elocution. Elocution. So what goes into elocution? Have you ever heard of the word anyway? No? Okay. So this means that when you are making each word sharp and clear and concise instead of, you know, blending them together and mumbling. So earlier today in our conversation, I kept saying, slow down, speak clearly, slow down, speak clearly, right? You need to be able to have proper elocution when you are talking, not only with me, but with any. Like, exactly. Um, like anyone that called you and she was talking so fast. Exactly. Exactly. I was like, uh, slow down. I don't know what you just said. Right. So you need to be able to pronounce your words properly. They don't, you don't want to bum, um, bumble, mumble. They need to be clear and sharp and understandable. Okay. That's a, that that's just proper communication. So I want you to say this. Betty eats butter better on bread. Go ahead. Butter. Betty. So doing all of this that we talked about, and we'll continue talking about it throughout the year. We started on this stuff, you know, last year, but we'll continue bringing it back, talking and practicing um, proper elocution. But this will help your listeners know that you are con that you are a confident speaker and they will enjoy when you recite information in a confident way okay and also we talked about never speak too quickly because when you speak fast it's hard for people to understand what you are saying you want to speak with a good pace you want to pause while you're talking to let your words sink in that's why we love commas in the appropriate spot when we're writing our stories right and i have you read your stories aloud those pauses that you take in your stories or if you're reading it aloud the pauses and the pace that you're taking as you are reading aloud it allows whatever you're saying to sink in um, to your reader, and it will also help them visualize your story. All right. Aye. Any questions for me? Nope. Nope. Say Aye. elocution. Elocution. Which is what? Which what is proper elocution? The it is. Correct way of um, speaking. Very good. So very good. The art of speaking skillfully. And some of those things we talked about are pronouncing your words properly, being loud and clear, making sure your words are crisp, standing tall if you're standing, sitting straight if you're sitting, proper pro posture, looking at your audience, pausing while you're talking, taking your time and pacing yourself while you're speaking. All of that um, goes together. All right? What's up? What's up? So, um, when I was doing this, when I was talking, Oh, ah. so while you were saying Betty eats butter better on bread, you felt as though you were, you were short on bread. That's because you weren't pacing yourself. You were rushing saying it. So say it again and just take your time. No one's going to say, well, no one has control over the pace you take. You don't want to go too slow like a turtle because we're going to be bored, fall asleep. You don't want to go too fast. Because we're going to be like, uh, don't get it, right? You want to find a pace, your own pace. So my pace is Betty eats butter, better on bread. My pace is Betty eats butter, better on bread. Wonderful. Excellent. Good job. Hey girlfriend. hey girlfriend, hey girlfriend, 
Alright. Okay.